All right, hello everyone, and welcome to our webinar on Virtuoso Hybrid Server. The focus of our technical webinar today would be on the new release of Virtuoso um, Hybrid Server version 7.5. During the webinar, we will present our breakthrough Windows containers that we are introducing in version 7.5 in technology preview mode. We will also deep dive into the specifics of snapshots optimization and talk about the Virtuoso hybrid server roadmap and ecosystem. The webinar today is dedicated to the Virtuoso hybrid server 7.5 release, however, during the roadmap session, we will also talk about new and exciting features that we're introducing for Virtuoso containers and Virtuoso hypervisor. And please don't forget to submit your questions using the Q&A option, and we will address your questions at the end of the webinar. We will also run a few polls throughout the webinar, and I encourage all of you to participate. And we will also be sending a copy of the uh, uh, webinar recording to all attendees, as well as a survey that would be available to all attendees uh, right after the webinar. Please meet our speakers, Mike Bromi, product manager and product owner of Virtuoso Hybrid Server, Anna Sivirinka, director of engineering at Virtuoso, and Dennis Lunov, Linux kernel and QMU KVM team lead. The Q&A panel will be supported by our senior software developer, uh, Dmitry Nisterenko. Now, before we start, I would like to say a few words about Virtuoso to some of you new to our company. Uh, Virtuoso is a pioneer in virtualization technology with uh, 20 years of experience in software business. We started with uh, system containers and eventually extended our portfolio and solution stack to virtual machine virtualization, software defined storage and uh, hyperconverged solution. Now, before I turn the presentation over to one of our featured speakers, Anna, I'm going to launch our first poll. All right, so the poll should be available uh, to you now. Uh, one of the first things we will discuss is the key trends that drive our product and engineering development. So we'd like to see what you are seeing in terms of VPS trends in your particular industry. Please take a moment to answer the poll on the screen. How do you see the VPS market in two, three years in your particular industry? You will notice that the poll only lets you submit one entry, even though you might see more than one trend, of course, but please just select the top trend that you're witnessing. All right, so we will take some time. Answers are coming, thank you. Okay, so let's see the results of the poll now. And the results should be available for all of our viewers at the moment. Okay, so it looks like um, our viewers are seeing a variety of trends in the VPS market with the top, with the top trend being transitioning from, transi uh, from traditional VPS uh, to cloud resource-based model. Great, and thank you everyone for sharing. Uh, now let me turn the presentation to Anna Severinka, who will, um, uh, who will reflect on some of the VPS industry trends we see and will present the strategy and concept behind Windows containers. Uh, Anna, to you now. Thank you, Tamara. Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to present today one of the key features of uh, Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7.5, Windows Containers Technical Preview. Uh, you know, when I joined uh, Virtuoso back in 2005, the team was one step away from the first version 
of uh, Virtuosa containers for Windows. Um, I think it was uh, version 3.5 at the moment. And uh, I joined the team and spent several years on this project. And I really liked the project because it was very challenging from the technology point of view. But uh, as some of you know, we had to close the product because uh, it was impossible to maintain uh, for each uh, new version of Windows. But uh, my nostalgia is not the reason for introducing Windows containers again in uh, Virtuosa Hybrid Server 7.5. Uh, so let me share with you why we decided to give uh, Windows containers another chance. Uh, firstly, we see the demand. Uh, here is a virtual private server market forecast uh, from the global market insights. It clearly shows that uh, Windows hosting takes a, a significant part um, of the global hosting market. It's more than 30% and it is growing. And the trend is also supported by market demand for agile infrastructure capable of delivering anything as a service uh, for Windows application delivery in particular. Uh, you might say, okay, we have Windows virtual machines for that. But we understand that the total cost of ownership is uh, key for our customer success. And this brings us to the second reason. So optimization of the total cost of ownership. And uh, here I should probably uh, first say that Microsoft has uh, two types of containers, so-called process isolated containers and uh, Hyper-V isolated containers. Hyper-V isolated container is um, actually a lightweight Hyper-V VM optimized for container use cases while a process isolated container is similar to Linux containers. As uh, we would like to optimize the total cost of ownership, we have chosen process isolated containers. And uh, here are the benefits that they provide. Uh, process isolated containers are much more attractive than Hyper-V virtual machines in terms of Microsoft licensing. For example, Windows Server Standard License allows to run uh, two virtual machines, but uh, an unlimited amount of containers. Of course, this is not something that we can control, uh, but uh, I think you would agree with me that at the moment, it looks very nice, right? And the second point here is, of course, density. Just like uh, Linux containers, Windows process isolated containers provide uh, two times higher density than uh, virtual machines. We compared uh, uh, Windows containers with Hyper-V virtual machines on uh, standard hosting workloads and uh, confirmed that. So on the left, you can see the WordPress density and on the right, .NET Nuke density. And both uh, are more than twice better for containers. And thirdly, since Microsoft now also has uh, built-in containers technology, we don't have to patch Windows internals as we did 15 years ago. So they provide Docker API and uh, host compute service API. And uh, we can now base our product on the official Microsoft APIs. And this makes the solution sustainable in the long term. To summarize, um, market demand for Windows hosting, great total cost of ownership, and availability of the official Microsoft APIs put together gave us a very good reason to research Windows containers. Uh, but uh, when we've started the research, we realized that uh, being designed as application containers, Windows containers are not suitable 
as is for our customers' use cases uh, because they lack some uh, important functionality. Uh, there is no remote desktop. Some operations are only possible with the container rebuild. For example, uh, changing container resources and the same for applying Microsoft updates on the host. This operation also requires to rebuild all the containers on the host. And also, neither backup nor migration tools are currently available for Windows containers. So our goal was to overcome these limitations without going too deep into the patching of Windows internals, as we like to do. And uh, here is how we see the solution. Uh, we believe that uh, Windows containers can be a great fit for the managed VPS use case or for anything as a service use case. Uh, this means that end customer should be using it for running applications predefined by service provider, not a general purpose VPS. With this idea in mind, we are providing the following solutions. Firstly, instead of a remote desktop, we suggest uh, using control panel for managing applications inside a container. Uh, we are discussing this with a couple of control panel vendors. Um, and for this, uh, the control panel itself must be able to run inside Windows containers and it must survive the rebuild operations. This is in our plans for update one when the feature is going to be production ready. Uh, secondly, we are going to uh, store all the customer's data on the persistent volume. And this also will be one of the challenges for control panels because they have to support this. And thirdly, we developed several tools such as uh, a script for backup restore uh, Windows containers volumes using a Microsoft backup feature. Uh, we also extended uh, libvirt driver, adding an ability to migrate containers, relying here on Microsoft cluster shared volumes and Microsoft storage spaces direct. And we developed a tool to change container resources such as uh, RAM, CPU, disk IO limits on the fly. This is a unique feature available only in our product. So what's included in Windows containers that come with Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7.5? As I already mentioned, there are several unique features, namely backup, migration, and updating resources on the fly. Also, we added the ability to manage Windows containers via libvirt from the Virtuoso hybrid server host. Uh, this, uh, uh, this means that uh, you will be able to manage uh, Linux, Windows, containers, virtual machines with a single interface. And uh, there is no need to learn new tools. Uh, we tried to make it as simple as possible in terms of installation and configuration. Uh, important that we closed a security vulnerability that allowed uh, one to escape from containers file system to the host. And for your convenience, we implemented a Grafana dashboard for Windows containers. Uh, what's next? Um, we are still working on integration with control panels on uh, introducing some troubleshooting tools for service providers. And uh, we are still thinking how um, to deal with Microsoft updates installation that requires containers rebuild. So this is what in our plans for a production ready feature that is coming in update one. Now I would like uh, to briefly guide you through the deployment process and explain in a nutshell the setup. 
there is a very detailed documentation available in our user's guide uh, in advanced tasks and managing Windows containers. Uh, so let's now go through, go through it uh, real quick. Uh, first, uh, you would need one server running a Virtuoso hybrid server. Uh, and three servers, or for evaluation, this can be virtual machines, running uh, Windows Server 2019. Uh, then you should configure the Microsoft Storage Spaces Direct Cluster, generate and copy certificates, and then download and run Virtuoso Addons Installer on Windows hosts. Our documentation contains step-by-step uh, -step instructions for all of this with exact uh, command line options. The next two slides contain some of the commands that we implemented in libbird for Windows containers. Um, you can see that with the uh, uh, Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7.5, uh, Windows containers can be managed in a similar way to uh, virtual machines and Linux containers. For example, uh, using Versh. Uh, for the full list of available commands, please refer to the user's guide. And here is what we implemented in uh, terms of changing resources on the fly. So uh, memory limits are available, CPU limits and shares, and uh, disk IO and IOPS limits. That's all I wanted to cover today uh, regarding the Windows Containers feature. We hope that uh, now you are as excited as we are. Um, and we know that uh, uh, this is an important and complex topic for many of our viewers. So we are offering a briefing session to anyone interested in learning more about Windows Containers. Uh, please indicate your interest in the poll that is on your screen now, and our team will uh, follow up with those interested after the webinar. And on the slide, there is also a mailing list where you are welcome to send any feedback regarding the Windows Containers technical preview. It's uh, very important for us to develop a feature that meets your expectations. Thank you. And now I would like to hand it over to Dan Lunev, Linux kernel and QMU KVM team lead, who will explain how we accelerated virtual machine snapshots in Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7.5. Dan, to you. Uh, thank you, Anna. Hi, all. I would like to tell a small story about the problem of our customer. Some time ago, they have report that during snapshot creation of virtual machine the downtime of this operation was too big for our customer first we would like to say that uh, this happens by design as in qmu uh, the snapshot of virtual machines happens synchronously one should pause virtual machine write all memory to the disk and after that, unpause the machine. This takes time, for sure. But uh, after the analysis, uh, we observe that the situation is not as perfect as we described. Uh, the IO subsystem of the host was not fully utilized. Uh, there is a big space for an improvement. Why this happens? We start digging. Uh, first, we have found that there is a problem with non-cached IO descriptors we are using for all IO operations. Switching to cached, this is not an option because in this case, we will have additional memory overhead on the host and some IO operations on very big and fast disks, though a little bit slower. Thus, we have to fix the situation. Why uh, the problem happens? If we use non-cached file descriptors, the kernel requires that all IO requests coming to the kernel should be aligned. This is not the case uh, 
for snapshot creation. QEMU code is not optimized for disks, and we will have to do an optimization. What is the problem? If we get an aligned request, uh, the user space application has to perform two additional requests at the boundary of the request to get the whole data aligned, and after that, write the data. By the design here, they get 200 persons overhead, and this is a problem. Also, there are some problems with writing to the disk image. They are creating new clusters each time they are creating a snapshot. And thus, uh, if we write cluster partially, this would also lead to some additional metadata updates on the file system. And if we fix that, and we do fix that, uh, we get a situation improvement. What have we do? This sounds very simple. We should uh, provide the queue of the requests coming from the upper level and align those requests to clusters. Uh, this cluster should not be very large and uh, should be written in the background. For snapshot revert, which actually has similar problem, this solution doesn't work. The problem is that if we have a queue of requests for reading, uh, we will have those requests reordered in the kernel when they come to the disk. And thus, we will have non-sequential IA on the disk, which is slow downs on the rotational medias. We will have to send next read request once current request is completed, but before the data is consumed by the application level. And we get fascinating results. Uh, the improvement is around 10 times on the snapshot creation and 30% on snapshot revert. Why such less gain on snapshot revert? Because rotational media helps us. Uh, we get read ahead inside the hardware disks, and this mitigates uh, the problem of the software. But talking about this, this is just a band aid. Uh, right now, the company is working on making downtime of a snapshot creation to be in seconds. Mm, so we hope that this will happen next year. That always trying to improve the performance of virtual machine in this area, in that area, and so on. So this is what I would like to say about the snapshots improvement. And now I'm passing the microphone to my colleague, Mike Breume, which will talk about product roadmap and the ecosystem. Yeah, thank you very much, Dan. Uh, so you would probably notice another poll pop up uh, on your screen during this portion of the presentation. And uh, as we discuss uh, the product roadmap for Virtuoso Hybrid Server, we are very interested uh, to learn your preference for development. If you would consider your individual priorities when responding, it would be very valuable to our team. Uh, so with regard to the development of Virtuoso Hybrid Server, which would you prefer? Uh, so continued development of new features uh, on version seven or prioritize development of new version uh, eight, which is probably which is based on Reddit Enterprise Linux eight. Uh, so take your time and uh, answer uh, this poll. So what I would like to show, this is the roadmap for the next uh, one and a half years. Uh, Anna mentioned already uh, last week, we've published uh, Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7.5, uh, which is a huge step for us. It includes a lot of new features and basically development for this version um, started a year ago already uh, when we decided about features which we want to build in. And uh, Anna explained already Windows containers, the VPS use case, which is in technology preview stage right now. Uh, but we introduced a lot of additional capabilities and features in 7.5. So we, first of all, added uh, libvirt management uh, for Linux containers as well. 
So we had it already for virtual machines. They are perfectly fine to manage previously with libvirt and virsh and virt um, install. Um, and we extended the capabilities to manage Linux containers uh, based on our technology via libvirt as well. The same applies to Windows containers, Anna mentioned already and um, showed you the comments, how to deploy uh, and manage Windows containers. So right now, you will be able to use libvirt standardized API and um, standard comments, which are known uh, uh, by Linux administrators very well for all kinds of uh, virtualization capabilities we offer. We also introduced uh, auto updates. Uh, it's um, um, a feature to deliver updates for uh, kernel user space, security, and ready kernel updates uh, automatically to our installation base. Uh, so it works in the following way. We have three different um, categories and or rings for uh, shipping updates. And uh, one is fast ring. When we publish a new update, it's immediately installed on the node, uh, which is um, participating in fast ring. Then we have our uh, stable ring uh, where updates are being deployed two weeks after and the slow ring uh, when updates are being installed four weeks later. And uh, this feature can be configured, of course. Uh, so it's disabled by default when you update existing nodes to 7.5, and it's enabled by default uh, when you deploy new nodes with 7.5. You can specify um, the policies for updating. So you can set up auto, slow, uh, stable, or fast. In auto way, uh, Virtuoso decides uh, on its own uh, where to deliver updates. So we do it in some stages. So we deliver it um, to 10% of our installation base um, immediately after update to 40% after two weeks and to 50% uh, four weeks later. So that after six weeks, we have all the installation base, which has uh, auto updates enabled uh, running on the latest version. Uh, we also added capabilities to do um, agentless backups for virtual machines made by Acronis um, Cyber Backup. Uh, we had this capability already for containers uh, since <clears throat> a couple of months, and we aligned this feature and make it on par between containers and virtual machines. And now you are also able to do agentless backups for VMs. And we also introduced uh, and shipped the product or shipped the product right now with uh, built-in monitoring capabilities. So we added uh, Prometheus metering uh, and uh, export this data to any Grafana installation uh, and the same for Zabbix. So you can easily integrate uh, any VH, um, Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7.5 installation into existing monitoring system. And we introduced um, another round of storage performance improvements, which are mainly focusing on improving erasure coding performance uh, for serving virtual machines on top of it. So with Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7.5, it's perfectly fine to run, uh, to host virtual machines on top of Virtuoso storage uh, using erasure coding. This applies right now to virtual machines. And in Q1 next year, we are going to publish Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7.5 Update 1, um, mainly with production-ready Windows container feature. Uh, what does con production ready mean? Right now, there's no management panel to um, manage Windows containers. So uh, you cannot uh, create uh, users inside easily with a panel and so on. Uh, so we want to ship the product together with some management panel for Windows containers. Uh, for example, it can be Plesk or Solid CP. And we are going to <clears throat> rebase uh, Virtuoso Hybrid Server up, uh, 7.5 Update 1 to Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.9. Right now it's based on um, RHEL 7.8, uh, and we will just update uh, it to the latest kernel and user space from user space from Red Hat. We are also going to introduce smart updates. Uh, smart updates is a um, more intelligent version of auto updates. So right now, when you leave every system to auto, I've mentioned that uh, Virtuoso decides on its own um, to which node uh, updates are delivered immediately after release. Uh, but this 10% uh, doesn't belong to a single customer. They belong to our whole installation fleet we know worldwide. And with smart updates, uh, service providers will get the capability to decide on its own which node participate in which ring. Um, and it's aware of uh, the whole installation fleet. 
So for example, there's a, um, an operator which is deployed and um, uh, tracks all the nodes and all their um, state, which patch state they have, uh, which uh, updates are missing and so on. Uh, when we deliver, uh, publish a new update, it starts updating um, the nodes and it also does health checks. So when it updates a node uh, and the notice that the node uh, is not responding after update or behaves uh, not normal, it will immediately stop updating uh, next nodes, uh, which belongs to the same customer and notify administrator uh, that there is some problem which has to be fixed or at least investigated. And we will also introduce um, another round of libvirt management enhancements. So right now libvirt can be used to manage containers and virtual machines, but host, some host node capabilities are not able to be configured via libvirt. For example, uh, policies for uh, VC MMD like density or performance, they cannot be set via libvirt yet. And in Q2 next year, we will uh, publish Virtuoso Hybrid Server 8 uh, alpha version. It's a full rebase to Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, so uh, modern um, Linux kernel, modern hardware support, um, modern architecture, and so on. We will uh, introduce modular file system support and virtuoso storage integration, which is obvious it's our proprietary storage product. Um, we will have some additional third party integrations. I've mentioned already, we have, for example, uh, Acronis backup integration already for agentless backups uh, and so on. So we are constantly extending it um, you will see it on the next slide. And um, we are going to introduce um, agent-based um, cyber protection uh, for uh, virtual machines running Windows uh, based on Acronis technology. Uh, so they have an agent which does ransomware and malware protection for Windows, which can be deployed um, and protects the whole environment. And uh, in Q4 next year, we are going to publish a um, better version of Virtuoso Hybrid Server 8. And uh, it will include Kubernetes orchestration API. So what does it mean? Uh, right now we switch our proprietary APIs um, step by step to libvirt. Uh, with libvirt, you get single node management. So you need to uh, monitor and track and deal with all these infrastructure uh, management operations. Like when you create a new container uh, or a new virtual machine with um, four gigabytes of memory or, and for example, two virtual CPUs, uh, you need to find the right place on your own. LibVirt will not do it for you. So you need to track all uh, your resource information. In case of Kubernetes, uh, the Kubernetes operator will know uh, what, is a, 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 or what are the available resources inside um, your infrastructure. So you basically fire an API call to Kubernetes, please create a container with four gig of memory, two virtual CPUs, and Kubernetes will decide on its own what is the best location to place such container and only return back that container has been successfully created. And we are going to introduce it for Windows containers as well uh, and for Linux virtual machines and for Windows virtual machines. So for single node management, you will have in future libvirt uh, to manage containers and virtual machines and for orchestration, so for cluster orchestration, you can use Kubernetes. Uh, we are also going to introduce Docker Hub for um, templates. Uh, right now, we, uh, we ship our product with a couple of operating system templates, like for CentOS, Ubuntu, um, Debian, uh, and so on. And in future, uh, we want to extend it um, to use Docker Hub for uh, downloading. Uh, templates from it uh, and assemble it as some kind of uh, EZ template, which is known from uh, Virtuoso uh, uh, to rapidly deploy containers. It will give service providers like you uh, <clears throat> access to a wide range, so several thousands of applications and operating systems to deploy containers. <clears throat> we will have WHMCS integration. We have it right now, so WHMCS fully supports Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7. Uh, but we want to, of course, <clears throat> build it on top of Virtuoso Hybrid Server 8 as well. And we will have Acronis backup integration. Uh, and in Q2, 2022, we are going to publish RTM version of Virtuoso Hybrid Server 8. There will be no new features compared to beta or alpha. Uh, we only include and integrate beta feedback, um, do heavy bug fixing and stabilization so that the product becomes mature from the beginning. And on um, next slide, 
there will be another poll uh, because we want to, yes, we want to better understand uh, <clears throat> most important integrations for your business. Uh, so, for example, which third party integrations are most important for you? So, please select um, the top two. It's a multiple choice question, so you can select um, two answers uh, and submit it to us. And so, for example, uh, one is for management panel. <clears throat> Uh, for backup, uh, malware protection, billing, monitoring, and other. So um, it will help us to prioritize um, integrations and discussions with um, third-party vendors. Uh, so basically what you see here is a full picture of um, Virtuoso Hybrid Server and uh, Virtuoso Hybrid Platform. <clears throat> so we have a couple of areas where we work with third-party companies to build integrations. And by the way, that's also one of the reasons why we um, switch proprietary APIs to some standard APIs, uh, because it's much easier to integrate with third party companies when using standardized uh, open source APIs. So there are a couple of areas like admin panel, self service portal for end users, monitoring, um, storage, security, backup, a cluster orchestration and API, billing and provisioning, Windows containers. Uh, virtual environment templates and application catalog. Um, and you see the green items, so all these green bullet points, uh, they are already available in Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7.5. So we have already um, a lot of admin panels which support our solution, <clears throat> um, not for all technologies right now. For example, Solus IO and Jelastic, they support it for containers. Um, and for Jelastic, they are planning to support virtual machines uh, in Q4 this year. Uh, and uh, for self-service, uh, it's pretty much the same. So we have, for example, Solus IO, which um, allows management of virtual machines uh, from end users. And we have already <clears throat> uh, Prometheus and Grafana and Zabbix integration for monitoring. Uh, we will extend this. Um, with each uh, major version and each update uh, and so on. So basically at the end, all these points will become green and we will add more. Uh, so for storage, we have virtual storage uh, support already. And for security, uh, we are currently looking into partnering with Acronis. I've mentioned it already for ransomware and malware protection. Uh, so at the end, we want to switch from agent-based malware protection to agent-less. Uh, malware and ransomware protection. So um, agentless means that uh, a small, a very small uh, application is running inside the container or a virtual machine at the beginning, and uh, the whole protection engine is running on the host or on some, uh, in some isolated environment. And for backup, we have already now Acronis support for agentless backup of containers and virtual machines. We have our OneSoft support and we are looking into BearOS integration. Uh, it's very popular disaster recovery solution, open source. Uh, and we have already some requests for it. For cluster orchestration and API, I've mentioned already that we uh, want to <coughs> integrate uh, Kubernetes support and KubeWorld support into our management stack. And for billing and provisioning, we have already a couple of working integrations as of now, uh, which can be used, and we want to extend this further. Anna mentioned already Windows containers, so we fully support Microsoft Windows container platform with some additional unique features, uh, which are not available in um, Microsoft's own uh, management <clears throat> interfaces to it. And we have uh, virtual environment templates. Um, Right now, we are working on um, SVP certification of our hypervisor uh, for Microsoft, uh, and we have already uh, support for cPanel and Plesk, and we are uh, going to deliver ready-to-use templates later with it. <clears throat> and for application catalog, I've mentioned already uh, that we want to um, switch to Docker Hub for um, <clears throat> downloading uh, templates and assemble and create containers. Now let's um, see the results of the poll. Okay, that's uh, very, very nice. So uh, it looks already it's aligned with our um, ecosystem and platform approach. So majority of uh, users uh, wanted to have um, additional admin panel and self-service capabilities. Um, so uh, we have already most of our uh, third-party integrations in this area. 
Um, and for uh, billing and monitoring, uh, we, well, actually for billing, we have already like four working um, solutions which can be used right now with Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7.5. And for monitoring, we introduced already Prometheus and Zabbix with um, update delivered or published last week. And we are going to extend it with Nagios and uh, some more monitoring tool tools uh, during the next updates. Perfect. So <clears throat> with this, I would like to uh, hand over back to Tamara. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, Mike, Anna, and Dan for the outstanding presentation. And thanks to our audience for your time and participating in the polls today. We have some time to address questions. Uh, questions were submitted during the webinar and we had also questions coming prior to the webinar. And uh, we will be following up with all questions uh, for sure. So um, I see several questions related to Automator uh, and the feature development. This was partially covered by Mike uh, during the ecosystem update, but Mike, would you like to um, answer this question one more time for us? Uh, which one exactly, Jamara? Because I, I have a lot of questions now, which I was quickly yes, looking the for. Future, uh, the future of Virtuoso Automator, the features and uh, the development roadmap. Uh, well, uh, uh, Virtuoso Automator in Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7 is a fully supported product. Uh, we release updates for it and we fix bugs uh, and we also introduce uh, uh, new capabilities. Um, we don't um, develop so many features like we do in our core product uh, for now, uh, but um, new important functionality is also going to be supported in Virtuoso Automator. Uh, and uh, this is situation for Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7. In Virtuoso Hybrid Server 8, um, there might be uh, the, the case that uh, we don't have Virtuoso Automator anymore. But it's not clear yet. Uh, I want to be honest here because we have a lot of integrations already with admin panels and self-service portals. So to give um, users options, uh, like with Solos, Flexion, Virtualizer, Jelastic, uh, we are working with Mist.io already. Uh, Foreman and Cartello is um, easy to support because it are open source solutions. So there are a lot of options. Um, and Depending on this, on um, the efforts and the available integrations in Virtuoso Hybrid Server 8, there might be no need for Virtuoso Automator anymore. Uh, right now it's fully supported and we will maintain it uh, fully in Virtuoso Hybrid Server 7. We fix bugs and we even de uh, develop new features for it. Perfect, thank you, Mike. So uh, there is another question from Jason around uh, VZ storage. The question reads, if, we, if uh, VZ storage is integrated in Virtuoso 8, does that mean it's not integrated in version 7.5? Is this integration uh, regarding failover support or something else? Uh, Anna, would you like uh, to take this one? Yeah, sure. Um, no, the reason it's, uh, mentioned, it's uh, fully supported in 7.5 uh, in the same way as it was supported in 7.0. Moreover, we uh, introduced significant performance improvements in uh, storage in 7.5. Uh, but the reason it's mentioned uh, on the roadmap is because uh, uh, the eighth version uh, will be rebased to new kernel and um, uh, switching to libvirt API. So uh, based to new kernel means that we need to, uh, to uh, re-implement some integrations with storage. It highly depends on the kernel. And uh, as we are switching to libvirt, we will have to re-implement some of the other available integrations like WHMCS, uh, backups, and so on. So uh, we are mentioning them once again because it's ad additional efforts for us as a team. Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you, Anna. There is another question also related to V storage and auto update feature. Um, so can you explain um, how um, does uh, the auto update feature recognize V storage? Would it uh, update to host in a cluster simultaneously? And would it update the, or, uh, the master MDS 
Last, what about updating dispatcher and VA agent while backups are running? So it's quite a complex um, question. Um, yeah, so maybe uh, and the answer is rather simple. Yeah. <laughs> so um, as for the storage, uh, we are excluding uh, nodes run in storage from this uh, auto update feature because storage update is a rather complex procedure. Uh, and uh, as for a dispatcher and uh, virtual automator, and also for the storage, we are going to address this uh, with our smart update feature, which Mike uh, has mentioned. So it's planned on update one. Perfect, thank you, Anna. There are a couple of questions related to installation of Virtuoso hybrid server in multiple modes as a standalone installation and as a clustered installation. Mike, can you please walk us through the resources that are available online, um, the documentation and options in terms of governance from Virtuoso? Uh, well, actually we have um, a very detailed deployment guide for, um, for example, for Virtuoso storage installations and for clustered installations. Um, it starts from infrastructure assessment. Uh, so it guides you through which kind of hardware is needed, um, which amount of memory, which type of SSDs uh, for which um, storage roles, for example. So if you run a metadata server component or a chunk server, which basically stores the uh, actual data of customers. Uh, and it guides you through all these steps. So like amount of nodes which are required for certain uh, data redundancy levels, um, for replication or for erasure coding, uh, what are the obstacles uh, and so on. Uh, for local storage, it's more simple. Uh, of course, uh, so basically uh, you can decide if you want to run some local rate um, and so on. And we also have documentation which covers uh, local storage installation. And basically you can decide uh, when you, for example, download the ISO image and uh, boot it to some bare metal system, you can decide if you want to deploy local storage or virtuoso storage. If you deploy, for example, virtuoso storage, uh, there are like two or three questions, not many, uh, which asks, is it your first node? Uh, then it will uh, create and deploy everything which is required for the first node. And um, if you say, no, it's my second, third, fourth, uh, and additional node, it will basically ask you for some token um, and some IP address where the management system or the first system um, has been installed, uh, and then join it into this cluster. And you can later configure it uh, either from command line or from uh, user interface um, and specify roles and so on and services for example great thank you mike another question related to installation and configuration process uh, is related to upgrade procedure from version 7 to version 7.5 anna can you please uh, walk us through how this upgrade can be uh, facilitated Yeah, it's uh, absolutely the same process as installing uh, the previous updates, update 13, update 14. So no uh, difference in terms of update procedure. Excellent. Thank you, Anna. So we have more questions. And as I mentioned before, we will be following up with everyone. So no question will remain unanswered. Thank you. Um, so you will now receive invitation to participate in a brief survey, and we would really appreciate if you could take a few more minutes uh, of your time to submit your feedback. Uh, please do so. And with this, I would like to wish everyone uh, a great rest of the day and a wonderful holiday season ahead. Thank you, very, uh, everyone, and uh, see you soon during our next technical webinar. Thank you.